Hi, I'm Mel Starkweather of Starkweather Association Services and Cirrus Change Readiness. I'm here with my partner, Joe Plasterer. Hello, everyone. So as an association leader, have you ever felt frustrated with your AMS and you started looking for something new? So today we're going to discuss how to know when a replacement is needed or when a re-implementation or optimization is a better option. Just by way of background, we have been helping associations since about 2006, and we have helped them both re-implement or optimize their existing uh, AMSs, and we've also helped them adopt new ones. So today we're really excited to share with you a little something about what we've learned. So I wanted to kick it off today asking Joe some questions. So you've seen so many different situations uh, with different associations. Uh, what are some signs that you definitely need a new AMS? You know, that's a really good question, Mel. Um, you know, we have association leaders come to us often frustrated with their current systems. Um, we'll hear stories about how, you know, the team, you know, they basically think the tech, the tech sucks, they aren't happy with their experience, it's hard to use, uh, they have a hard time serving members, we might hear the members don't like it. And uh, once we kind of can get through this sort of layer of legitimate emotions about people's frustration, we ask about things like, well tell me, has, has uh, your business model changed? Um, are you offering new services or products to your members? Do you want to offer new services or products to your members? Has legislation changed that impacts your association? For example, with GDPR, we saw a lot of associations frustrated um, with the fact that maybe their technology couldn't help them meet um, the requirements that the European Union um, was putting in front of them in order to serve their uh, members from the UK and the EU. And, and these days now we not only have GDPR, we've got California. Mm -hmm. um, for some health organizations, there also might be HIPAA compliance issues. Correct. So there is a lot of legislation that might be impacting how you interact with your yep. members. If something like that changes, that might be a really legitimate reason why you may need to leave a system because the system just can't accommodate that. Uh, exactly. Um, that level of frustration you know, causes staffs to say, hey, maybe it's time to start searching. I would say another thing that we've seen is that there are maybe um, people who haven't really seen the front end of their system from the user perspective. So you have admins who are not really fully understanding why things aren't working or why their members are upset. Mm -hmm. And depending on whether or not there are problems that can be resolved when you start looking at things from the user's perspective, that could also lead you to understand that you absolutely need to leave a system or conversely that the system um, can be amended for that. So with that in mind, what are some of the false flags that make people think that they have to leave a system when they actually don't? Yeah, and that's a great question. I would say, kind of going back, tap, tapping back into staff frustration. Mm -hmm. You know, it, if staff comes to you and says, this technology really can't do the job I need it to do, and it stinks, uh, not intuitive, again, the language of emotion and frustration, you know, ask, your, ask yourself a couple questions. Um, first question is, do we have the same people on board in the company who were here when we implemented the technology? Um, have we also created a training program where we have distributed the skills on how to use the technology to the team, or does the team just have to kind of figure it out as they go along? Because one of the frustrations you might be seeing is that it could be the technology is perfectly good and could meet your needs, it's just the team doesn't know how to use it. And you know, we, when you hear things like, oh, it's not intuitive, you know, I kind of ask myself, how many enterprise technology systems that touch every operational piece of an organization are intuitive? Um, I think you can make- Not many. Not many, yeah. because they have to do a lot of things. So then it begs the question, have we taught our team how to do these things? Have we created documentation? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, what about systems that you've seen where there might be a lot of ancillary systems bolted on? Does that make you think that it might be time to get a new system? Or is, does that maybe leave some wiggle room that maybe an optimization still is an option? A great question. Uh, a lot of our clients are pretty sophisticated and they want both 
the security of a database of record in an AMS, and then they want to take advantage of some other uh, important systems that maybe the AMS doesn't provide. It doesn't necessarily mean that they need to change, but again, you know, we look at the business model. What is it you're trying to accomplish? How do you serve your members? And then does your technology meet that need? And if the answer is yes, it could meet that need, but it needs some changes, great, and stay on the same platform and enhance it. If the answer is no, this technology can't support it. For example, some technologies don't support GDPR well, some technologies don't support multi multiple currencies well, well then maybe it's time to think about something different. Okay, um, that's good, we have very little time left, but can you in a nutshell describe what it would be like uh, to work with us with a re-implementation? Excellent question. Our re-implementations begin with a focus on the business, and it's what is what are the key business processes? What do we maybe want to offer into the market that we don't offer? Can we do a business process model to see if the technology supports that process? If it does, great, enhance it. If it doesn't, then it's time to start looking for something different. Okay. Well, thanks, Joe, and uh, please yeah, uh, clink, clink, click the attached Calendly link and you can talk to Joe some more in detail about any questions you might have. Uh, if you have any other questions, visit us at our website. We've got lots of resources available. And uh, let us know if you have any questions that we didn't answer. Absolutely. Love to hear from you, and thanks, and have a great day.